but stop holding back. I saw you moving through a crowd in a foreign country, laying hands on people and miracles were taking place. God wants to raise you up with such an amazing raising up. You haven't only been holding back because of your husband, you've been holding back even because you didn't want to offend your pastor and others. But God's saying it's time to step forward and stop offending him and let the glory of God be manifested in your life. You're one of the hidden ones that God's going to raise up with power and glory and anointing hallelujah praise the Lord I see you in marketplaces even in Africa oh shop up even in famine ridden areas they're going to know the bread of life hallelujah and God's going to use you in ways that are going to astound you as God spoke tonight praise the Lord ah I saw you with those dumbbell weights in both hands. And I saw that God was trying to bring a balance into your life. You were looking at the right hand and the left. God was saying, I want to strengthen you in every area. I don't want you just to be strong on one hand, but I want to bring forth that balance in your life and I saw that as you exercised in the spirit hallelujah that God was doing a full work amen a full work in the spirit and things that you have been brought into 
the world for you're going to see begin to happen from this night forward hallelujah God has loosed you from certain things in order that he might fill you with himself and with his glory praise the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus you both have pink on from up here I saw a rainbow of God's glory coming over your head you're just in the right place at the right time you're gonna find a glory breaking forth in your soul hallelujah those great hungers and longings that you've had to be used of God in a greater way you're going to step into it hallelujah it's going to be a new walk a new way but you're going to step forward in faith hallelujah and I see people following after you I see people in congregations that have been indifferent and cold suddenly being awakened by what God's doing in your life amen and rising up and following after you even like the Pied Piper hallelujah this is your day in God amen that anointing coming upon you hallelujah for leadership in this last day and hour of the Holy Ghost praise the Lord ahead on your hands calamari bibiando Anticipation of my coming unto thee. For I say this, thou knowest not in what moment I shall be poured out even upon thee, saith the Lord. For I shall come unto thee as the rain, I shall come unto thee as the former rain, as the latter rain, saith the Lord. Be expectant, be full of anticipation. Look ye unto me, for this is the day of revelation. 
Look ye unto me, for this is the time of visitation. Look ye unto me, saith the Lord, for thou knowest not how I shall do it, but I shall do it through thee, as thou shalt yield thyself completely unto me. I shall use thee in unexpected ways, saith the Lord. I shall do it for through thee, and for thee, and by thee, saith the Lord. I shall do it by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to remind you, if you're leaving the campground, leave an order. If you're not going to be back, leave an order, $12, uh, $10 for the book and $2 for postage. This is my new book that should be coming in this week, Glory, a Jerusalem Experience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Oh, I, I just feel we're not expectant enough tonight. Amen. Oh, oh, I feel we got to get on spiritual tiptoes and expectation. Hallelujah. God's got some special things for us. Hallelujah. Oh, we just got to get up and peek into the gates of glory. Peek over the portals. Hallelujah. And as we have that anticipation in our spirit, oh, hallelujah, we're going to see the Lord doing amazing things. Praise the Lord. I'm reading tonight from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'll begin with verse 5. Hallelujah. 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 Second Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm beginning with verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be right? glorious hallelujah for if the ministration of condemnation be glory much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth for if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, 
the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm reading tonight from verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the new covenant, the new testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It was during winter camp one night that everybody was gathered at the altar and uh, I had a vision of one of the ladies that was standing on this side. I remember it just as plainly. Uh, and at first I couldn't understand uh, what the Lord was saying. Sometimes with a vision, uh, you have to ponder it a moment uh, and reach into it to know what the Lord is saying uh, to you. Uh, and so I saw her as she was standing on two mountains. And usually, you know, we think that if a person's standing on a mountain, any mountain top is wonderful. But as I looked, I saw the fact that she had one foot on one mountain top and another foot on the other mountain top, that it was a very precarious position to be in. And then I understood she had one foot on Mount Sinai and another foot on Mount Zion. There was one foot that was standing on the old and one foot standing on the new. One that was standing on, on the law and the other standing on the spirit. But God wanted her to take her foot off of the old and stand with both feet feet on Mount Zion. Hallelujah. In that realm of the spirit of the living God. We are coming into a day greater than any day that we've ever known. And thank God for this promise that he's given unto us that he promises us who have no sufficiency of ourselves that we will have sufficiency in God and that that sufficiency is not of the letter that killeth but that sufficiency is of the spirit that maketh alive and the one thing that we need to be continually reminded of by the spirit are these basic truths that we already know but we need to be reminded that we must not uh, having begun in the spirit uh, try to make ourselves uh, complete in the flesh uh, hallelujah we oftentimes see a vision uh, in the spirit uh, and then we try to fulfill it uh, by the works of the flesh uh, and we come only to frustration uh, and uh, disappointment uh, but the vision that is seen in the spirit uh, can only be fulfilled uh, in the spirit uh, and by the spirit uh, hallelujah and in these last days uh, God is going to raise up those uh, who have a relationship uh, of confidence uh, to the Holy Spirit uh, who have been taught by the spirit uh, because there are new things things God's going to do and we may never have done those things before but we recognize the spirit and so we can move forward in confidence I remember when I went to be with Emperor Haile Selassie the first time in Ethiopia and I, I 
knew that God was going to give me a word for him. I didn't have a word already, but I knew that God was going to speak to him. And he, we were sitting in the audience chamber up at the Grand Palace. Uh, and I said to his imperial majesty that I had a word from the Lord for him. Would he like for me to deliver the word? At that moment, and he, uh, the reason I said that to him was that there was a palace minister seated in the room. And I thought if he didn't want uh, the palace minister to hear what God had to say to him, then he had the privilege of excusing uh, the, the, the minister uh, uh, beforehand. Anyway, the emperor turned to the palace minister, His Excellency, to fetter work, uh, and he said something to him in Amharic. Uh, then he turned back to me and he said, you may deliver the message of the Lord now. I closed my eyes. I was familiar with prophesying. And although I was familiar with prophesying, something happened to me at that moment that had never happened to me before. You know, a palace is not the place to try out the new. Amen. You know, you always want to go with shoes that fit in a situation that is brand new. In the natural, a palace is not the place to try something for the first time but something new began to happen and suddenly I was conscious you know usually with that prophetic flow it flows out of your spirit and flows out of your mouth as a torrent and the flow continues until the end and then it stops but this time I said a sentence and I paused and I thought, oh my, what's happening? And then God gave me another sentence. And my, the pause seemed twice as long as the pause before. And I wasn't quite sure what was happening. But all through the message, there was a sentence. And this lengthy pause... And finally, when I had finished prophesying, I kept my eyes closed for a moment or two, praying, and then I opened my eyes, and I looked, and the emperor was still praying. And then I looked across at the palace minister, and I saw him writing, and I suddenly understood what had been happening for the emperor had turned to the palace minister and had said, take down the message of the Lord. And the Holy Ghost had given it to me at dictation speed. In those days, I didn't know anything about dictation speed. Since then, I've had occasion to dictate lots of letters, but in those days, you know, we didn't have an office and didn't write a letter, and all we did was just go and preach, and so we'd never dictated a, a letter before, and if the Holy Ghost, in fact, if the emperor had said to me, take it, give it to me at dictation speed, I probably would have gotten nervous and wouldn't have known what to do. I didn't know dictation speed, but I knew the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a familiarity with the Spirit of God that there are going to be new things. And I tell you, God always tries the new things at just the time you don't want Him to. Amen. If you could have a trial run at your home prayer meeting, if if you could have a trial run at some other time, if you could arrange it a little better, you would certainly do it, but God doesn't do it that way. A few weeks ago in Jerusalem, we had another South African group that was with us. They were a group of uh, dancers from Pretoria and Johannesburg and from that area. 
In fact, they weren't there for our regular Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night meetings. So we had a special service one afternoon just for them. And I began to minister to them. And in the midst of it all, I was prophesying. And I saw a vision of them at the president's house. And I just began to prophesy what I was seeing of them at the president's house. And when I finished prophesying, it suddenly dawned on me who was going to arrange for them to go to the president's house but me. Well, when I... You know, sometimes when you prophesy, you don't know you're going to... God gets you right out on the limb. You don't know you're going to be the one to fulfill the word that you've just given. I had never arranged for anybody to go to the president's house before. I got on the phone uh, and began to, began to call and make some phone calls. And it was a few days later. Here we are. Forty people sitting in the president's house. It was especially an important time because uh, that was the day that uh, Prime Minister Shamir was supposed to be coming and delivering uh, uh, his, his new government that was being formed, the names of it. Uh, we came outside uh, after being inside uh, uh, and uh, we came outside uh, and these dancers began to dance uh, on the lawn of the president's house uh, right there in Jerusalem uh, singing songs like the Lord is building up Jerusalem uh, and dancing uh, holy dances before the Lord. Uh, well, uh, we had never done it like that before, but it was was the spirit amen that arranged it it was not arranged out of our own thinking it was the Holy Spirit that introduced the subject and he who authors will also finish amen what God begins to birth he will also cause it to come into fruition hallelujah as long as we are willing to be a people that move in the spirit and not in our own understanding. A number of years ago, I was crossing Australia and every time I got in a plane, first in Perth and then clear across the country, Every time I got in a plane, I thought I was falling asleep and prophesying in my sleep, that I was dreaming of prophesying. And I thought, this is strange. And it happened, I thought, well, I'm prophesying so much on the ground. And even, you know, they'd arrive at the airport and we'd be prophesying over people at the airport before we got on the plane. And I just considered that it was a continuation, uh, prophesying on the ground. Now when I get up in the plane, I just fall asleep and, and begin to prophesy. But after several days of this, it always happened when I got in the plane. I was suddenly conscious I was not dreaming of prophesying. But when I got on the plane, suddenly... Uh, I was being carried away in the spirit and my spirit was going forth and prophesying. It was so strange to me. I had never heard anyone speak of these things, but I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And yet I had, I was, it was totally new. When I got back here to camp meeting, Someone came up to me and they said, Sister Ruth, they said, I had a strange experience a week or so ago. Said, I was in my barber shop and suddenly you were there and you began to prophesy over me. And I have been totally changed since you prophesied over me. 
They said, what do you think about it? Well, I sort of stammered a little bit. <laughs> I said, well, 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 uh, the Lord's doing some new things. <laughs> That's a wonderful line. You better learn that because he's going to be doing a lot of new things. <laughs> but during that next week, people from different parts of America, they came up and they told me the same thing. And I was conscious that... Uh, you know, when you fall asleep, you sort of doze. You're conscious that you're going into sleep. But in this experience I had had uh, on the plane, I would sit down and suddenly, it was like my head would fall over and suddenly I, I knew I was away somewhere because I prophesy. I knew the beginning of the prophecy and the end of it. But I didn't know what was being said in between. And I remember that I told my brother and, you know, we've been trained that if we don't understand anything God's doing, to be careful what we say. And so having been trained in this way, he sort of looked like that and didn't say anything. And I guess it was a week or two later that Normally during camp meeting time, he doesn't go away, but he's right here. But something came up, he had to fly to Atlanta. And when he got to Atlanta, he was gone a day or two and he came back. And before he came back, there was a brother that was here at the camp and he said, Sister Ruth, there's a lady that is doing the pots and pans in the kitchen and she's had a strange experience and she needs to tell somebody and I've asked her to speak to you. So she came and began to speak to me and this is the story she told. She said, I was in the afternoon service yesterday and she said, the people ministering came down and began to lay hands on the heads of people. And she said, suddenly, I was feeling a little sorry for myself. I said, Lord, I don't have anybody to put their hand on me and bless me. And she said, suddenly like that, I felt the presence of someone standing in front of me and I felt a hand on my head and I felt this blessing from God that just transformed my soul. And I said, but Lord, who is this? And the Lord said, this is the man of God. She said, but Lord, I'm a simple person. I don't know what you mean when you say the man of God. Who is this that has blessed me? And the Lord said, this is Brother Heflin. Now, Brother Heflin was down in Atlanta. Anyway, he came back the next day and I said to him, I, I have a story to tell you. So I began to tell him the story I just told you. Tears came into his eyes. He said, I know the moment it happened. He said, I never was aware before you told me your experiences. But he says, I've had that experience many times. And I didn't know what was happening to me. I thought I was just falling asleep. But after you explained your experience, he said, when I suddenly came to myself uh, in the business office where I was sitting, I looked at the watch uh, and it was the exact moment of the altar service uh, here at camp meeting. Uh, hallelujah. Now, the reason I'm telling you that story this morning, I didn't know I was going to tell it when I got up here, but uh, this morning... Uh, a sister came to me and she had never heard the story that I've just told. And she said, Sister Ruth, last night 
you came into my bedroom and you ministered prophetically to me and she said I am a brand new person today hallelujah hallelujah I'm saying that there is a realm of the spirit that we don't need to be fearful of. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight in the service, I stood here and I had an amazing experience. I suddenly felt as the time when the prophet stretched himself out over the child that was dead, fingertip to fingertip and toe to toe and mouth to mouth, I felt the, the Lord come unto me and put his fingers on my hand, fingers and his hands on my hands and he stretched himself over me and he said I'm going to have a people that learn how and know how to stretch themselves by the spirit and impart that which I have given unto them and they're going to impart life and spirit and anointing and power and the dead are going to sneeze and come alive in Christ Jesus and I saw that God was going to take us and give us an ability in him to impart in ways that we've never imparted by the spirit of God hallelujah for it is not by might nor by power but it is by my spirit saith the Lord I want to read from Zechariah chapter 4 and I'll just start from verse 6 and he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace, unto it hallelujah praise the Lord in the spirit we're going to speak grace to every mountain that's in our way in the spirit God's going to put a grace in our lips that we're not going to even curse mountains but we're going to speak grace and as we speak grace hallelujah Bro brother Ward preached a tremendous sermon this afternoon for those of the, you that weren't here, be sure to get it. How that Isaac dealt with people with grace. Amen. And when allowed them to be blessed by the well. And he went on and, and uh, dug other wells, get that tape, uh, and be blessed by it. But there is a grace uh, that God wants to put in our hearts uh, and in our spirit. Oh, Tiki Amandai, uh, hallelujah. And we're going to be able to look to the greatest mountains, uh, the greatest obstacles, uh, the greatest tumbling blocks, uh, the greatest situations, uh, and we're going to speak grace unto them by the power of the Holy Spirit and as we say grace, grace we're going to see that the mountain is going to come down and be made a plain and we're going to walk on it in the name of the Lord preparing a highway for the coming of our King hallelujah praise the Lord oh Papa Monday already since the beginning of camp meeting we've seen the Lord do some wonderful things 
Our sister here uh, had began to have a miracle during the tent meeting. Uh, and uh, last night, uh, again, the Spirit was ministering to her. And today, for the first time in four years, she hasn't taken her medication. Uh, hallelujah. Her parents have spent $40,000 uh, on her in the hospitals. Uh, she's been in the hospital seven times. Uh, hallelujah. But by by the Spirit, that mountain has been made a plain. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Oh, bless the Lord! We're going to see God working in ways that amaze us, and we've got to lay aside our own understanding and step forth by the Spirit of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord it is not by might nor by power but it's by the spirit get your feet off of two mountains and stand on the mountain hallelujah of the spirit that outpouring of the Holy Ghost praise the Lord and as you stand in the spirit you're going to find that you're going to be taught of the spirit led by the spirit you're going to move in the spirit you're going to walk in the spirit we had a sister that came into the meeting a couple of weeks ago I had never seen her before from Sweden but I knew that she knew things in the spirit that most people don't know and I was as uh, I spoke with her, uh, I discovered she's only been born again uh, for about four years, uh, and yet God has given her experiences uh, in the realm of the Spirit uh, that many people don't know uh, anything about. Uh, if we're willing to be taught of the Lord, uh, if we're willing for the Holy Spirit to teach us, uh, He will teach us. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. This is going to be an unusual summer, but it's going to be a glorious summer because if the ministration of condemnation was glorious, how much more shall that ministry of the Spirit excel in glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to excel in the glory of God by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and our Heavenly Father. I just believe thee this night to minister unto us. We want to be taught of the Lord. We want to move into the new things that thou dost have for us. Oh, we want to leave aside the things of our own understanding and move into the Spirit. We want to be taught of the Lord. We want your Spirit to lead us on out into waters to swim in. We want to stand, O oh Lord, at the source. Hallelujah, where the water ushers out from the threshold. Habarianda, I just lift up your voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Takashi Mahaye. I want us all to gather here at the front. Let's believe. Hallelujah for the Spirit to flow through us in newness. Oh, hallelujah, everyone just coming down close. Let's see what the Spirit shall do. Oh, Baristi am I. Hallelujah. He under ma 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 ri mandai. Begin to sing in the Spirit with me. Yalamando, Halamandari, 
Angels, hi. 